It's all about humanity. Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. So uh, we're going to be doing a video that may be a little controversial and by no means am I trying to make it controversial at all. Um, realistically, um, is the title of the video somewhat clickbaity? Probably, yeah. Uh, but I really wanted to get you guys' attention to talk about something that I think is extremely important when it comes to, you know, kind of coaching or directing uh, new or inexperienced uh, firearm purchasers to certain rifles like AR-15. So one of the questions that usually comes up time and time again, especially with me, is what should I buy? And I really discourage anyone from just knee-jerking a company out there and just saying, you should buy this. Uh, because that brand, the cost of it, the application of it may not necessarily be exactly what they're looking for. So anytime that someone comes to me and says, hey, I want to buy an AR-15, what do you think I should get? My response is to answer a question with a question. <laughs> and I know that's... Uh, that's really hard to do. A lot of people get annoyed with that, and that's perfectly fine. So we're going to open up a little bit of a conversation here. I'm going to be a little long-winded, and then we're going to dive into the AR-15 that I purchased for what I thought was going to be about $299, and we'll get into that here in just a second. But realistically, one of the things, and some of the things that I really push uh, in all conversations about what I should buy is... What are you going to use it for? What is your primary and secondary purpose for that firearm or pistol or whatever the case may be? Uh, how much money do you have to spend? Are you looking to do training? Um, are you looking to shoot every week, once a month, a couple times a year, so on and so forth? You start, antsy, uh, you start asking these questions and that really drives to... A certain path of what that individual should buy. If their budget is fairly high end, they look to do a lot of training, they're expecting to shoot every weekend, uh, you know, they're looking for not only home defense, but maybe they're, they get into contracting or, uh, you know, has to go overseas with that rifle for some reason, then naturally, yes, I'm going to steer them to BCM, Daniel Defense, uh, Noveski, even Aero Precision. Those are going to be some of the brands that I would push them towards depending on how much they want to spend. Maybe they're just a concerned citizen. They're going to um, train a couple times a year, uh, then I would still kind of push them that direction. However, recently, when I was purchasing this right here, I had an opportunity to get into a conversation with my FFL, Jim from Flying Monkey Gunworks. He's a huge supporter of the, fan, of the uh, channel and is able to get me a lot of the things that you guys are seeing in my videos. He had a phone call from a single mom who thought it was time for her to go ahead and purchase a firearm, um, a rifle, and wanted some advice on what to get. Uh, naturally, AR-15 was in the conversation, and so Jim and I had a talk about what was said. And it really kind of sparked an idea in my head that we as a gun community are kind of split. We have the buy once, cry once type of people. And then we have the people who really don't have the money necessarily to put into it, may not even have the concern to put money into it, or may not even know, right? So those are some of the 
perspectives that I'm trying to share with this series. We are going to do a series. We're going to be talking about the rifle that I got right here on the on the uh, coffee table that we're, <laughs> we're going to look at. But I'm also going to look at some other rifles as well. Maybe, you know, uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 15 or some stuff from Palmetto State. You know, I'm a big fan of PSA and, and I've done a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of work from them in the past. But uh, realistically, I want to show Basically, if you're going to spend X number of dollars, these are the pros and cons, and this is what you should expect in what you get, right? So um, we'll get into that, and we'll kind of start uh, getting these rifles out and putting some rounds through it to give you an idea of what, it, what it's like. If you're going to be in that mindset of only shooting a few hundred rounds a year, um, then, you know, this may be an area for you. If you're here and you are watching this because you own a BCM or you own a Noveski or Daniel Defense or any of those other types of rifles, uh, thanks for swinging by first and foremost and by no means am I sliding you in your purchase. This is not anything about um, BCM. This has nothing to do with them being, you know, a overpriced manufacturer or nothing like that. I really like uh, BCM. Noveski, Aero Precision, Daniel Fence. I really think that they have some really great quality products. Uh, however, there's a price tag with it. And for some people, that's just not um, feasible for them. It's kind of like cars. You know, you see people out there, they're driving Lexus, they're driving BMW. Then you got people that are driving like um, Chevys and Fords. And then you got people that are driving Hondas and Kias and stuff like that. So, you know, there's a wide spectrum of people's financial abilities and so are those of us in the gun community as well. So that's what I'm aiming to accomplish here. Okay, so let's jump in to the rifle. And I sure do appreciate you guys um, hanging around for this because I know I'm a little long-winded, but let's talk about this. And this is kind of somewhat sponsored by Primary Arms, unknowingly. I did purchase this from them. I didn't have them send it to me or anything, so I did buy it from them. And I wanna say a special thank you to my Patreon crew because I ended up buying it from the funds that I saved up from my Patreon people. So you guys rock. Thank you so much for all of your time, effort, and uh, your hard-earned money that you're contributing to the channel to make this happen. So. Thank you so very much. So let's start off with the lower. Uh, it's going to be this right here. And um, to be honest with you, I was not expecting very much. This is an Anderson manufacturing uh, lower, complete lower. And um, I'm not a fan of Anderson. I, I, I may be kind of snobbish, but I really kind of think that Anderson is like the bottom of the barrel. Um, and, and I do apologize to Anderson for saying that, but that's been kind of my perspective on, on them. I've heard a lot of complaints about fit and finish. I've heard a lot of complaints that the mill spec is kind of out of specifications. So this is my first one. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of surprised. I'm actually happily surprised with it. Um, so let's go over it. Um, it's a mil spec uh, lower as far as the cutouts go. It is kind of enhanced because it does have a flared trigger guard here. So not just the uh, pinned trigger guard like a mil spec would. Standard A2 stock. It's got the Anderson manufacturing butt stock. Now, and this is actually pretty interesting because this is actually set up for a civilian buffer tube, right? because you can tell with the angle back here, that is the difference between a mil spec buffer tube and a civilian buffer tube. The buffer tube will be angled on a civilian one, and that is how this is set up as well. But it does have some really nice aggressive texturing on the back, which is pretty cool, and it has a QD mount right here. Not a fan of it being that far forward. I'd like to see it back here, but at the end of the day, who cares, right? Um, Standard buffer tube. One thing I will say is the castle, castle nut here, not staked. So that kind of leads into the uh, QAQC from Anderson that I've had issues with in the past. Same type of deal. At the end of the day, I'll keep an eye on this. I've got it marked. So if it starts to work itself loose a little bit, I'm going to see that. But it seems like it's torqued down pretty good. 
um, standard buffer spring and buffer. Uh, and one of the interesting things too is that this fire control group, the trigger, is not mil spec. And I would have expected a mil spec trigger out of this. It's not. As you can see, uh, the hammer here is going to be uh, something of an aftermarket design. And the trigger itself is actually really nice. It still comes in about six, six and a half pounds on the trigger pull, but there's no take up. Most mil spec triggers are going to have some type of take up, uh, maybe a millimeter, two millimeters worth of. Uh, kind of play in the trigger before it hits the wall. This is right at the wall automatically. And that's something I really did like. So hopefully you guys can see this. No take up whatsoever. There's a little bit about a little sponge, kind of like a Glock trigger after you hit the wall, but a little sponge and then it just breaks. And that's something I really was impressed with. So good on you, Anderson. Uh, I really like this trigger group. I picked this up again, like I said, from Primary Arms for $129.99 complete. Uh, so that was really good. Naturally, since it is a lower receiver, a serial numbered item, it will have to be shipped to an FFL. So make sure you keep that in mind if you decide that you want to try to pick one of these up. So needless to say, Initially, I was kind of impressed when I first looked at it. Okay, so let's move on to the upper receiver. The upper receiver I picked up for $169.99. So between the upper and the lower receiver, I paid just under $300, $299, $298.99 or whatever it is. Um, ignore the red dot, we'll get to that here in just a second. But this is what I got right here. This is a Radical Firearms 16 inch upper receiver. And when I bought this, I thought it was complete. I thought, oh man, what a great deal. I'm getting a complete AR, buying a complete upper, complete lower for like $2.99. That is amazing. But as you can see, I'm missing the charging handle and I'm missing the bolt, uh, the bolt carrier group. So uh, when I got it in the mail, I was like, bark, bark. I kind of messed that one up. But I went ahead and picked up those. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Specifications on this is that it's got a 12-inch free-floated key mod handguard. And, um, you know, I didn't really even care that it's key mod. All of my stuff is M-Lock. I like M-Lock better, but I know for a fact that I am not going to attach anything to this uh, handguard. Uh, if I do, I will use the Picatinny sections that it has at the 3 and 9 o'clock positions. Or if I want to, you know, take this out and make this a varmint gun, coyote hunting gun or something like that, it's got a Picatinny section down at the 6 o'clock for a bipod. So that's, uh, that's a positive note as well. It's got uh, QD mounts here uh, and up front. So if you want to put a sling on it, that's pretty good. The barrel on this is a chrome, chrome molly uh, nitrided barrel. So uh, that's pretty nice, it's pretty standard. It's not chrome lined or anything like that, but it is a one in seven twist and it's chambered for uh, 556 NATO. And then the last thing that I was really impressed with is this brake right here. This brake that uh, Radical has put on this upper uh, has made this one of the flattest shooting AR-15s that I have outside of my M16A4 clone that I've got. That's a 20 inch barrel, so naturally it's going to be pretty flat shooting to begin with. But this brake, um, it's a little excessive, but <laughs> it makes it really flat. So there is that right there as far as the upper receiver goes. Now, like I had mentioned, um, I purchased a bolt carrier group. I didn't realize that it uh, didn't come with it at the time, so went ahead and picked one up. Got this, I um, can't remember where I got it from, but it's from SAA is the brand. And I looked over the specifications. Everything seemed to match up with what most bolt carrier groups are going to be. It's uh, made of the correct materials. It's MPI tested. Uh, the gas key is staked uh, appropriately. I think it's staked fairly well, to be honest with you. It's a full auto bolt carrier group. So it checked all of the blocks and it was $49.99. Uh, 
And then from the same company, I picked up a $12 charging handle. So for 62 bucks, I was able to complete the AR. So right at 162, give or take a dollar or so, I completed that. And then I went to Amazon, picked up a Chinesium Bushnell TRS-25 clone, uh, working just fine for $29.99. So total $3.92, give or take a dollar or so, is what I ended up to put everything together. And so far, I mean, it's it's it does okay. So let's talk about exactly what my experience has been with this um, setup and with the magic vetting, we're going to assemble it. Okay, so there we go. We've got it all set up. And um, again, this has been a pretty decent rifle. Now, let's talk about, uh, before we even went to the range, getting this put together, one of the things that I am always concerned about when it comes to a AR-15 is, you know, a lot of people say that it's Legos for grown-ups, right? And that's perfectly fine. But when you are assembling an upper receiver and a lower receiver from two different manufacturers, sometimes you're going to have some fitting issues. And that is exactly what I have with this one. Now, I haven't had to break out a file or do any type of gunsmithing, gunsmithing to get this to work. But what I can tell you is that um, it is extremely tight back here on the rear takedown. Not necessarily a bad thing. You know, Aero Precision has uh, their lower receivers that has an adjustment um, key that allows you to, you know, tighten the lower and upper so that it's really locked in solid. And um, that's kind of what we've got going on here. It does help with accuracy and it can help with feeding issues as well. But at the same time, it could possibly also cause issues uh, with the misalignment of the buffer with the uh, bolt carrier group or other you know, unforeseen issues as well. Some additional wearing uh, of internal parts and stuff like that. So just keep that in mind. If you're buying from two different manufacturers, sometimes you may run into fitting issues, which could cause other issues down the line. So once I was able to get that uh, figured out and got it all put together, took it out to the range and right out of the gate, ran into problems. <laughs> uh, I ran into feeding issues right to start off with, and then I ran into extracting issues as well. Uh, the first couple of rounds that I shot, um, you know, once it fed in, okay, just fine, fired that round, but then the bolt carrier group did not extract that round. So I actually had to punch it with a, with a rod to get that round out, that spent casing out. Was that a problem with the firearm? I don't know. I can't tell you 100% yes, I can't tell you 100% no, because once I had the second issue, what I ended up doing is break everything down, lubed up the bolt carrier group, lubed up the internals a little bit, ran the action a few times, inserted a magazine, and off I went. No further problems after that. So could it have been some PMCS issues, uh, some preventative maintenance issues? Possibly, operator error. Absolutely, absolutely. So, talked about some of the uh, pros already. I like the trigger, the trigger on it's really good, even though it's still fairly heavy. This is not a match grade trigger. Still a really good trigger though, you know, kind of a single stage style mil spec trigger. The break on this um, will probably piss off your neighbors at the gun range, but uh, at the end of the day, it shoots and uh, keeps the muzzle extremely flat, which is something I really did like. The red dot on this, even though it is a TRS-25 clone from China, has been great. Uh, no issues. I've banged it around a little bit. It's kept zero, so good on you there. But one of the biggest downsides and one of the areas that you're going to find that you get what you pay for uh, has to do with the tuning of the rifle. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you're going to buy something like an Aero Precision or a Daniel Defense or, um, you know, a BCM, Navesky, those rifles are going to have tighter tolerances when it comes to the tuning, spe specifically on the uh, gas block, gas tube, 
you know, buffer, BCG, all that setup is going to be tuned so that it runs uh, you know, perfectly. This one is uh, overgassed. I can tell that it's overgassed and you probably can see it from some of the B-roll footage that I've been showing throughout this video. But one of the areas that you can also see is right here on the back on the charging handle. There is residue on the top and bottom of the charging handle that shows where a lot of the unspent gas has been collecting. Uh, and the, one of the reasons why that it collected right there and why I can see it so well is because when I was out the range, it was kind of misty. So it was trapping that, um, those unspent gases or the gas in the water as it rained and then you know put it onto the charging handle so uh and then i could also feel in my eyes how it was a little bit over gassed is that a problem for someone who is only looking to use this for varmint control home protection you know or whatever the case may be no i really don't think so i, I really don't even think that that's going to be a concern i don't even think that uh, most people will even realize that uh, unless you have shot higher end manufactured AR-15. So at the end of the day, would I recommend something like this to somebody? Yeah, I would, after I understand exactly what they're looking for. So again, first time with a Radical Firearms Upper, first time with a Anderson Lower. So <laughs> I can tell you, this is the cheapest AR I've ever bought. So, um, let me know what you guys think when it comes to something like this. Are you the type of person that is going to be a buy once, cry once, uh, and should only spend the most amount of money on a firearm? Or are you kind of the person that may be strapped for cash and can only get what they can afford, something like this? Maybe they just want to pick up something that is uh, fairly inexpensive, maybe a little bit more than this, you know, somewhere around the 600 or less dollar uh, mark, and then use additional funds for ammunition, training, um, you know, range time, all that other stuff. Let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comment section down below. I would always want to hear your guys' conversation. At the end of the day, if BCM ever wants to send me one of their rifles so I can compare the two, I would be very open to that. <laughs> uh, nothing but love for those guys. I have really nothing but love for all manufacturers, regardless of who they are. Radical, Anderson, uh, Palmetto State Armory, Aero Precision, Daniel Defense, uh, Novesky, BCM, all those guys, um, you know, Sons of Liberty, Gunworks, all those, all those guys, I really do appreciate everything that they're doing. Uh, but at the same time, we all have to understand that there is going to be a spectrum of consumers out there and not everybody can afford the same things. So keep all that in mind uh, as you guys are commenting down in the uh, comment section down below. Naturally, if you guys are interested in any of this stuff, it's going to be over at fitandfire.com. I'll put it under my builds tab so you guys can find all the links for this. And if for some reason the links are no longer up, I will find something extremely comparable to this one right here. These were deals, so the prices probably have gone up, especially with everything going on right now with uh, the COVID-19 type of stuff. Things are probably going to change. But with that being said, we'll figure it out from here. All right, guys? <laughs> Thanks so much for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. We'll catch you next time. And as always, freedom through strength. Talk to you later. Here comes a high five. Bye, y'all. <laughs>